Uh, welcome back, Mr. Kanye. Um, are you able to proceed? Yes, sir. May I just remind you that you are under oath and everything you say must be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Are we together? Yes, sir. Before the break, uh, you were telling us how the captured officers were killed in a forest near Nyambai. Correct? Yes, sir. And uh, in your testimony, you indicated that the following officers were killed. Yes. Lieutenant Jibril Sei, sir. Lieutenant Lamin Dabo, Lieutenant Buba Jame, Lieutenant Aliuba, Abdullah Ba, Lieutenant Bakari Mane, and Cadet Officer Amadou Silla. Correct? Sir. Do you know a person called EMC say? Yes, sir. Do you know what happened to him? Well, he is also killed, but not at the at the at the uh, at the forest. Um, where was he killed? Well, I was not present the time he was been killed. Upon arrival from the forest, we found his dead body. From reliable sources, said that he was killed by somebody called Mbub, but then I was not present. What Mbub? Uh, the Lance couple Mbub, but then um, the first name. Was, uh, what was his rank, as you said? Lance couple. Can you give us a description of him? He's a tall and black in complexion. Which, which part of the armed forces did he work? He worked, if I can remember, in the military police. Mm. Was he at any point in time posted at State House? I can't remember. I'll give you two names, and you will tell me whether one of them is correct. Abdullah Mbub or Babu Kanbub? If you don't know, tell us you don't know. Well, these two names, I can't, you know, we used to so name and the rank than even the phone name. Do you know which part of Gambia he hailed from? He is from Nyomi. Uh, thank you very much. And he was the, somehow, he, he was even participated in, like, he is, he is the deputy imam at that time, at the 1 BM. He was deputy imam at 1 BM. Yes. And the information you receive is that he killed EMC, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I had been saying. I asked you earlier uh, a question which apparently was not captured in the recording. Mm. I asked you who was present at Yundum Barracks, at, sorry, at the forest when these captured officers were being executed. And you named names. And the answer you gave was as follows, that the council members and senior officers who were present included Lieutenant uh, Sana Sabali, Lieutenant Edward Singate, Lieutenant Sadi Buhaidara, Lieutenant Yankuba Ture, uh, Lieutenant Peter Singate, Colonel Babu Karjata, uh, and then the others. Now let's talk about the orderlies. Which orderlies were present? Um. Only uh, Lamin Fati. Who else? Buba Jame Kanilai. Proceed. BNJI. Yes, proceed. BNJI. Does he have an initial? Uncle. All right. Who else? JCB Mendy. 
Yes. Uh, Lamin Marong. Lamin Marong, what was his, his rank? I think at that time, Lance Couple also. Among the senior officers, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Babukar, ba Babukar Jata. Apart from Babukar Jata and council members, was there any other senior officer present? I can't remember. Do you know a person called Mumudu Baji? I know him. Was sir. he was he present? The forest. No, yes. sir. Don't see him there. Was he present at Union Sorry. Was he present at Union Barracks in the morning? No, sir. You did not see him there? I didn't see him there. The second half of the day, did you see him there, Mudubaji? No, sir. I didn't see him there. How about Captain Marong? Did he go to the forest? He didn't go to the forest. He was the CEO then. So the only senior officer who was present, apart from the council members, was Babu Karjata? Yes, sir. Which I can't remember. Yes, sir. Um, so... After these officers were killed in the forest, what happened next? They were uh, taken back again, uh, put them in the same Land Rover, and bring them back to Yundong Barracks. And, uh, and then we dig and buried them there. At this stage, where were the council members when they were being buried? They were in the ante room, that is, uh, officer's mess. Did all of them return to Yundum Barracks at this, at this stage? End of exercise, all of them, we all come back to uh, Yundum Barracks. So, and the Land Rover was to the. Did you participate in the burial? Yes, sir. Do you recall who else participated in the burial? We got from the bush. We all participated. Uh, you told us that the officers went to the ante room, the officers mess. Yes, sir. So, when you now say that all of us who went to the bush participated in the burial, who are you referring to? I am referring to the oddlies, the junior, of the junior uh, ranks. And after that burial, do you, in fact, do you recall at what time this event took place, the burial? As I said, at initial stage, this was around after one or two with the party to the bus, and, and in our time, like around three o'clock, we are back. And what happened after this? Officers were buried. Then the council members left. What do you say to the suggestion that Jibril say he was very tall and his feet would not fit inside the grave? Was that true? Sir, no, sir. What do you say to the suggestion? that you took an axe and chopped off his legs such that the body would fit in the grave? No, sir. Sir, to be candid enough, they were not organized being buried. So there, but there was nothing like, you know, you know, 
these people, they are already dead. And looking at these soldiers, sir, more especially Jibril say, this man is a very helpful, helpful man to the soldiers. He even, you know, go, go, go to one Lebanese man in Bakau here, listen with him, bring goods to the soldiers for credit basis. This man is very pious and very helpful and very able. My, product, my progressive in the army definitely lays in the hands of him. And I was, when I was posted at Kudang, I was living in the same house with his brother by the name Aliu. Sir, this man, Aliu, his brother, to see, for me to meet with him in the same house on that, uh, at any given time, it will be only night time, like when I come to bed or he come to bed. Very respectful and very helpful to me. What God do I have? Or somebody who already dead, sir, they were not organized being buried. But there is nothing like cutting somebody's hand or harming again after we, seeing the dead. Uh, we want to get this clear. Is it true that his feet were sticking out in, in the grave? No, sir. You did not have any problem burying him? No problem, sir. Did you have anything to do with his feet? No, sir. To make the burial happen? Or no, something? sir. That's what I'm telling you. I have no problem of, you know, it's just pushing them. That's what I said. They, they are not organized in burial, but there is not like harming or cutting or reducing or so. No, sir. They were buried uh, yes. by yourself and the orderlies. orderlies. And the officers left Yundum Barracks, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Did you have a debriefing after this event? No, sir. Uh, the next day, did you hear what the government said happened regarding November 11th? Say again. Did you hear in the news uh, what the government said happened with regards to November 11? Did you, re re did you hear the government announcement about what happened? Uh, no, sir. What do you say to the suggestion that the government announced that there was an attempted coup d'etat and some soldiers lost their lives in the fighting. Is that true? That has been said there, sir. Is that true? Well, I was not present on the fight or at the fight. I was all alone at Yundum. And the time you were present, officers were executed and not killed during fighting, correct? They were, uh, they were captured, and ex yes, two officers, yes sir. They were captured and executed? Yes sir. And uh, after November 11, what happened to you and your career? I was, as I said, I was with Maron, uh, CEO, Captain Maron, then for some times I was moved back to my company, which was Bravo Company. But uh, the time I was with Maron, I was definitely thinking that maybe onto our you know, participation or involvement in this, attaching me to Maron, there will be a compensation, but of which there was nothing absolutely. Were you, were you at any point in time warned not to disclose what happened at Yundum Barracks and in the forest? Were you warned to keep it a secret? You know, as a, 
not we are not guarded and brief of to that. Were you personally told to keep it a secret? Nobody warned me of that. Okay. So what happened to your career after November 11? You said you thought you would be compensated, but you were not compensated. I was moved to my I was moved to Bravo Company for some times. Then I was in 1995-96, 95, I was transferred to the training school at Fajara. And who was the commandant of the training school at the time? Then it was Captain Peter Singate. At this stage, he was a captain? He right? was a captain. And uh, you were there until... Uh, when did you move from, Brabo, from uh, GNATS, the Gambia National Army Training School? I was there up to end of uh, uh, 96, 97, I was moved back to Yundung where I completed my term in December 97. I went on to retire. I voluntarily retired. Do you recall participating in an operation organized by Edward Singate? Yes, sir. Do you recall the exact date? I can't remember the exact date and the month. Well, can, can you tell us, but can you recall the events that happened? Yes, sir. I was one time in my uh, home, Burkama, where I was picked by one uh, BK Jata. Uh, what does those initials stand for? Well, we used to call him BK Jata. That is his name, but no. I know him as BK Jata. What was his rank at the time? Uh, staff Sergeant. Do you know where he is presently? Mm, some said. I had one of his, uh, I had somebody saying he's in America or so, but I've never spoke to him. So you said on this day, BK Jata picked you up from yes, your home yes, in Birkama. Yes, sir. At what time was it? This was late in the evening, around uh, five to six or not. And he said to me that, Edu says, let me come and pick you and we collect Paliu, Paliu Gomez to go and meet him in his residence at Cape Point with Tumul Tamba. At this stage, were you on duty? I was. It was like, you know, everybody is on standby. So we used to close and come home. Like, I was not on duty. Did you agree to go with BK Jata? Yes, I did. And uh, you joined him and left. How, how, what, what means did you, by what means did you leave Birkama? He came with a vehicle. What, uh, what vehicle belonging to who? He's the one who is driving the vehicle, so. Was it a military vehicle? No, he is not a military vehicle, no sir. So he picked you up, where did you go after he picked you up? And we go and pick uh, uh, one boy by the name Paolo Gomez. Was he a soldier? Yes, sir. What was his rank? Staff sergeant. Where was he deployed? 
Where did you pick him up from? We picked him up at around, he was, you know, staying at um, London Corner. But then we picked him up around uh, around Bartlett towards uh, Westfield and Tobacco. Did he know that you were coming? Well, Biggest, Biggest said he spoke to him. You know, at that time, telephone facilities were not much. I don't know how did he communicate to him. But you found him along Baptist uh, 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 area. Yes, yes. And uh, when you came to that area, you were expecting to find him there. Yes, please. And then you picked him up. We right? picked him up. Where did you go next? We go to uh, Cape Wren. Uh huh. And what happened? At Edwards, Edwards, Edwards place, Edwards and others place. At this stage, how many of you were in the vehicle? Myself, BK Jada, Tumbul Tamba, and Palu Gomez. Where did you pick Tumbul Tamba from? BK came with Tumbul to me. And Tumbul, does he have another nickname? No, that's his name, Tumbul Tamba. Does he have a nickname, another name by which he's known? No. Does the name Malia Mungu mean anything to you? Or that's not Tumbul Tamba? Right? No, Tumbul, that is not Tumbul Tamba. Tumbul, does he have a nickname, I as far as you know? No, I don't know. So the four of you yes, please. went to Cape Point. Cape Point. Which house did you go to in Cape Point? Captain Edward Singares, sir. And uh, was it a private house? It's a private house. No, it, it's like, you know, that is his. He's allocated with that place. We call the, I don't know, it, uh, former, either former VP's resident or Yes, that's where I decided. So you're referring to the vice president's residence located at Cape Point? Yes, please. And what happened when you got there? There, you know, uh, uh, Edward, we are briefed by Edward that, okay, don't worry, we are here. We are going to get rid of one fucking cunt. Could you repeat what you just said so we get exactly what you said? He said to us that, okay, we are going to get rid of that fucking cunt. One fucking cunt. We Wait. are going to get rid of one fucking cunt. Cunt, yes. At this stage, did he tell you who was he, who he was referring to? No, sir. But when he said that, you knew you were going to go on an operation, correct? Yes, sir. What Did kind of operation, we don't know, because we at that time, we are not with uh, rifle AK-47, meaning AK-47. But what did you understand him to mean when he said, we are going to get rid of one fucking cunt? What did you understand him to mean? It's like, at that time, definitely, all of us we are wondering, who is this man and what kind of operation we are going do you understand what he meant by getting rid of somebody? Did you understand that? No, sir. Did you ask him questions? No, sir. When this briefing was being made, who was present? Four of us. And his brother, Peter Singati. And, of course, Edward himself. Edward himself. Six this, of you? Yes. And uh, d did Peter Singate say anything? No, sir. And what happened after Edward briefed you and said, we are going to get rid of one fucking cunt? What happened after that? Uh, he, he, you know, he got up and joined, he drive his car, then followed by us, and Peter also followed with his car. So there were three vehicles? Yes. Edward in one vehicle? Yes. 
uh, the Peter. four of you in another vehicle, yes. and then Peter in a third vehicle. Yes. Did they tell you at this stage where you were, where they were taking you? Before we left in his uh, residence, Peter is the one who said to us that uh, he said to me that uh, drive to Yankuba's place, Yankuba's residence. Which Yankuba are you referring to? Captain Yankuba Ture. At this stage, were you told what you were going to do at Captain Yankuba Ture's residence? No, sir, we are not told. Did you know exactly where you were going? We are going to, I know that we are going to Yankuba's residence. What, of what, I don't know at the moment. Did you know exactly where that residence was located at this time? While you were in the vehicle going, mm -hmm. did you know where Yankuba's residence was? It's like, it's, it's around Senegambia and well, definitely right now, I can't identify the place. Did you ever go to Yankuba's place before this event? Not at all. Did you ever go to Yankuba's place after this event? Not at all. At what time of the day did you get there on this occasion? This was around, you know, uh, after seven to eight. Did you, well, apart from knowing the general direction that it, it was around Senegambia area, uh, did, you, did you know exactly where the, pla where the place is located? Tell us what you know, what you can remember. Sir, so definitely, at, at this point in time, right now, you know, it's been a while, I can't exactly you know, remember the place now. But before you left, mm -hmm. you did not know where Yankuba's tourist house was located? Yes, sir, because I've never visited there. This was the, this was my first time to visit to visit it. On the way while going, were you told who this fucking cunt was, quote unquote? Upon arrival, not only were upon arrival at the resident, we are told by Edward that okay, wait for us here we are going to the airport. Then I can remember, if I can fully remember, there was an activity at the airport. Either the chairman was leaving, then he had Jamia to somewhere else, or he is coming. You see? So they are going to see him off or receive him, something like that. The activity was at the airport. So from the airport, they will come. Did they tell you what to do at Yankuba's house? When we arrived there, the briefing was, uh, we are coming with uh, Kanye, we are coming with one, I'm coming with one minister. So you don't, he don't know you. Like, you will be at the gate, upon our arrival, you will receive us. You salute, you salute us and welcome us. And come with him. To the uh, to inside the house. At this stage, when you arrived there, where were the guards at Yankuba's house? To my surprise, we met no guard there and no family members, like his wife and family, wife and whatsoever. No wife, no guards, no nothing. So on that is. Uh, Pali, who told us that, uh, but are we here for guards? I said, ah, well, we are here, and they said they are coming with one minister. <coughs> Whether they are coming to have gathering, meeting, or we don't know. So, and he said to me, he said me, I should, I will receive him at the gate. So you people will be somewhere, somewhere around inside the house. It's, it's like that. 
And uh, during that briefing, who was present? That briefing uh, is Edward who brief us. Who brief we, we for? Was Peter present in the briefing? No, I can't see him. I don't see him. Was Young Cuba present at that briefing? No, I don't see him at that briefing. <coughs> After the briefing, what happened? That uh, he left. Who left? Edward. And how about the four of you? What happened to We remain. We remain inside the compound and the house. And where in the compound did you remain? Where Yankuba is. You personally, which part of the compound did you stay? I stood at the gate. Waiting? Waiting. How about uh, Tumbultamba? Oh, they are inside the house. I remember, is it me and either Tumbul or, or Palu, yes, we are outside. It's like we are inquisitive of knowing what is going to happen there. So we are not stationed at one place. We are rounding, you know, inside the compound and in the building to know what exactly is going to happen. Was the house locked at this time or was it open? It was open. You had access to go in, in and out of the house? Yes. Okay. And uh, what time of the evening did they leave? Did Edward leave? It was just about night. After it, it was night. And what happened afterwards? We were there up to sometimes. Then, you know, Peter is the first person who arrived. He came, uh, parked his car, and rose inside the house. Inside the house, hiding somewhere else. Because we did, I didn't follow him there. He just passed me at the gate, telling me that they are coming. So he entered inside the house. In the next five minutes time, no, I saw Edward, Yankuba, with, with a civilian. That may be the, well, a civilian rather. No. So when uh, Edward entered, he said, that's the minister. That's the time I know this man is a minister. I did salute. You, did I you salute. know his name? Uh, um, they said uh, Korosis. Uh, I later know him as Korosise, Usman Korosise. And you saluted? I saluted him. Say, can, sir, welcome, sir. So, okay. Then Edward lead. I follow him, and the minister was following me, coming inside the house. As we are entering, I just hear the noise, vip, vip, too, too strong, and the dumb man fell down. A surprise, a surprise attack at the back, I also take a step forward. That's the Edward turned to me. That is the guy. There was like what they used to palm the, uh, pepper in the local language, Kuda, Kanturang. That's what Edu take. Pestle. And, and hit. Pestle in English. Yes. Kur and, in Wolof. That's and it? Hit and hit him for the third stroke. Everywhere was blood. And Near him, there was a firewood stick where he picked and gave it to me. 
for me also to eat. I also eat. Then uh, uh, Yankuba took the stick from Peter, uh, Peter, and he also hit, and he called the rest of the people. We all hit. The man died. Why would he call each one of you to come and hit? Mm -hmm. Because. To my understanding, you just want to implicate us because after the tree struck this man, the place was full of blood. This man is already dead. He's already dead. Why give him us again and order us to whip him again when he's already dead? He just to Your view is he was already dead? My view, dead. yes. But the question is, you suggesting that he wanted to implicate all you? Are you suggesting he wanted all of you present to be involved in involved. the killing? Want to involve us. And what happened when this man was hit by all of you? And everywhere was full of blood. There you, you, you said all of you hit. I just want to get it very clear, and I'll ask you the question. You said in the beginning, Peter Singate first struck him. Is that right? Yes, two. Two strikes. Did Edward Singate hit the victim? He did. Did Yankuba Ture hit the victim? He did. Did you hit the victim? I did. Pa Aliu yes. Gomez, did he hit the victim? Yes. Tumbul Tamba, did yes. he hit the victim? Yes. BK Jata, did yes. he hit the victim? Yes. All of you present hit the victim? Yes. Was there anybody else in the house? Nobody else. You said there was blood all over? All over. And what did you do with the body? From there, we carried the, me, with the four, myself and other men from four people, we carried the dead outside, put him on his private car, the car which brought him, the car he came with. And there we come back to, to clean the place. The council members with Peter left. We, uh, so you said the council members that, yeah, that is Peter? Ed, that is Edward Yankwa and Peter. They left. They left. Do you know where they went? No, sir. So the four of you, what did you do after they left? We cleaned the place as it was before. What, what did you have to clean? The blood which was, which was, you know, you know, which was there from the man. These weapons that were used, where did you get them from? Well, the weapons are sticks. Yes. What was used by Peter, I don't see him, but that of Peter, that of, that of Edu was the uh, the this thing, what uh, a wife used to use to palm the pepper while cooking. Do you know where these things came from? No, sir. Where exactly in the house did this event occur? Or in the premises, for that matter? No, to me, it's like I'm receiving him going to meet where they are going to have gathering. It's like we suspect of, I suspect of, you know, having gathering, but not a case like this. So while going, it's like a corridor. It's inside the house, uh, sir. 
were you surprised that all these uh, tools were there uh, when this man was hit? It's like, you know, either Peter or Edu or whoever, who, or, or, or the, uh, the owner of the house know exactly what is going to happen and he plays this, uh, this thing. But that of the, the one using, used, used by Peter, I think that has been, that has brought by him. But the firewood maybe belongs to the wife of the young Kuba and the uh, Kuda I, I mentioned in the local language. Uh, you just said that maybe Edu or Peter or the owner of the house knew exactly what was going to happen. Yes. Uh, are you suggesting, are you suggesting, are you suggesting that the stage was set and these tools were placed there in preparation for the murder? It seems to be like that. It was prearranged. You are under oath. Yes, please. The whole nation is watching. Sir? I say you are under oath. The whole country is watching. Yes, sir. Do you accept that Edward Singate, Yankuba Ture, Peter Singate, yourself, Alaji Kanye, Jata, BK Jata, mm -hmm. Tumbul Tamba, and Pa Aliu Gomez, all of you participated in murdering Secretary of State Honorable Usman Korosise. Yes, please. That is the truth. That is the truth. What do you say to the suggestion that Yankuba Ture was not in that house at all? What do you say to that? He was there. Would it be a lie if Yankuba Ture were to say that he was not there? He was there. Would it be a lie if he says he wasn't there? A big lie for that matter. Would it be a lie if Yankuba Ture said that he did not participate in the killing? He's lying, he participated. Do you know what happened to the body afterwards? As I said, the body was carried and put into the, his official car. And we After that, did you see the body again? No, we didn't. After the, com the council members and Peter left, mm -hmm. do you know where they went? I don't know where they went. Did you subsequently come to hear what happened to the body? After the following day, we heard that one official car was some assault at around uh, Jaban Tauto end and it was born into us. One uh, person was there who was born. Did you subsequently come to hear who that person was? Well, as, as that happened, all of us, hence we, we, we are present on the exercise of this event, we have second thought that this can be, you know, Usman Koro Sise. Did you subsequently get that confirmation? Well, we, we are not told that it's him, but it's like, as we said, we suspect because uh, the following day, 
we saw, uh, I saw Peter, Peter Singade with, a, with born hand. You see? So he's always unrolling his, he un, uh, roll his sleeves. Anytime he unroll his sleeves, jacket, you see all the hands born. And we have second thought now. Then this must be Peter who went with this vehicle and born it. Where did you see Peter with his hands burnt? At the training school. What were you doing at the training school? I was at it. I was there as instructor. So essentially, you worked with Peter at the training school at this time. Yes, sir. And you therefore saw him with his hands burned. Yes, sir. Did you ask him how he sustained those injuries? Oh, sir, no, sir. Did you at any point in time receive any debriefing about that incident? Uh, from there, one or two days, we are called at the uh, Edwards resident. Edward? Edward Singades resident in Faja in Bacau. At this stage, what position did Edward occupy? If I can remember, he was the MOD, that is Minister of Defense. Yes. Did he occupy, you said he was living at vice president's residence. Do you know what other position who he occupied at this stage? No, you know, the resident was uh, occupying. I used to know that resident before. That is, I think, if, I, if I'm right, during Jara's time, it was, these are the two residents, Fajara and that place as VP's resident. In which location? Sir? Location? At, at uh, Cape Point. So you went to Edward's house? Yes, sir. Okay. Who went with you? Or who were, who were you there with? I was there with the said people. That is, uh, less, I think I don't see, you know, Tumul, Tumul Tamba. I was there with BK and Apalu. Yes. Peter Singate was he there? Peter Singate was there. Yankuba Ture was he there? No, no. Yankuba was not in Peter. Uh, it was resident at that time. Tumbul Tamba was there. That's what I'm. Tumbul. I don't think it was there for deep briefing. So it means it was yourself, B.K. Jata, Pa Aliu Gomez, Edward Singate, and Peter Singate. Yes. Just the five of you. Yes. Okay. And what happened there? And Edu said, okay, uh, end of exercise, job well done. So as soldiers, this is what is expected. When you are called, you respond, and you are given an instruction, you execute it. End of it. Did he say anything else? I can't remember other than this. Were you ever instructed to conceal the fact of what happened? Yes, that was stated. After, after his briefing, he said, you know, let's keep secret. I know you people can keep secret. So that is it. So he was asking you not to ever disclose, to disclose what happened. What happened? Did you tell anybody else after that what since, happened? Since then, I've never discussed this issue with anybody. After after that event, how were you feeling? Sir, I was definitely feeling very bad. That even caused me to, 
you know, to, to leave the army because, you know, all along, the, my involvement always causing death. I ask myself, what is this? It's like these people are using me as tools. This is not what I expect. This is not why I joined the army. I joined the army to defend my country, but not to destroy my fellow Gambian people. And moreover, my brothers, my relatives. Look at this. My first action is I kill my own relative, the same Jarankas. And in the, in the execution, the one was involved, whom I, whom I shared the same basin with him, that is Lieutenant Dabo. Suso, I told you in initial, Suso. Look at it now. Somebody whom I don't know, he, have done, he, he did nothing to me. Why putting me? Why condition me? Why forcing me to, to, to? I was like, I was working like offhead, a dead man walking. I can call myself. I was even in a haze. Let my time reach. In December '97, I will leave. No matter what, even I am going to beg outside. But I will leave this. I will leave this job. I cannot sleep. I was confused. Sometimes he himself will call me, P Edward, giving me alcohol to say, take this and you'll, your temper will cool. I have to look to myself. I have offended Almighty Allah. And at the same time, I'm even adding by using alcohol a Muslim like me, where I am, I lose in the, in the, in, you know, I have nothing in this world and rather than next world. I am in nowhere. I said to myself, when my time reach, I will leave. I was even looking all possible means for me to be dismissed. But it was not possible. It was not possible. I'm making all effort for me to be dismissed. No problem. Let me lose all my service. Can because you give us an example of what you did yes, to secure your dismissal? Sometimes I'll be, I cannot even sleep. I cannot enjoy nothing absolutely if I don't drink alcohol and get intoxicated where I can somehow forget just a bit. See, I was confused. My people don't like me to drink alcohol. When I drink alcohol, none of my family members will be beside me. Look at that. One fine day, I was even in the campus. I was on duty. I said today, I don't know what is going to happen, but I'll make sure I am dismissed. I rose to officers' mess, pack all their you know, breakfast materials, keep them in my bag and get them to the one house. Early morning, they came for breakfast there was no material. They said, where are these materials? Then the former CDS was the duty officer, Lebanon Baji. You know, uh, I can remember somebody was there. He said, it's Kanye who went to the uh, ante room. I saw Kanye entering into that room. Yes. And I was, I was called at the uh, RSM's office. I confess, yes, it's me. I was charged for stealing. Still, I was brought before you know, CEO. Then, if I can remember, Vincent was the CEO, Vincent Jada. Yes. I was fed up. I want, to be, I want them to dismiss me. But Vincent cannot dismiss me. He reduced me to the rank of sergeant. I plead guilty of the offense. And he demoted me to the rank of sergeant. Did, did you tell them you wanted to leave the army? I told him right, outright. So I want to leave. He said, this is not the way how you should live. Why? I said, I'm fed up. 
Yes. You know, as soldiers, when they know that you, you want to leave, instead for them to help you, no. But they will keep on, if you are rank, rank holding somebody, they will reduce you, keep on reducing you. If you are not rank holding somebody, they will keep on detaining you. Because they have, we have that access of detaining somebody in our own cell. We have before taking you to my to or, 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 or military police. You see, you eventually leave the army. Yes, I, in December 1997, I leave. I leave on the 15th January 98. I surrender all their materials and go home. I said. I am not leaving this country. I have offended Gambian people. I am not leaving this country. I will serve as a slave to my country. And I'll pray to God to change for good so that, you know, at any given time, one way or the other, you know, it's like God has answered my prayers. I am praying for this gathering always to happen so as to complain. Yes and tell Gambian people what have I did. Yes, because at some times, when I had my name in this audio, my family, my family don't even, uh, everybody was, part of me, it's like I'm alone. So it's like I'm alone in the country. It's like I'm alone who do all these offense. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you. Kanye, Kanye, and cancel everybody, Gambian people. These are the three events I participated. It's like I am the I am the chairman. Yes, but sometimes I sit back and say that has come because definitely Gambian people they are seeing me. I was a training instructor. I was a very confirmed instructor in, in related to my job drill. Uh, not only, only in the army. What I'm saying, everybody is seeing me. I train all formation, all formation, immigration, po police, fire service, custom, custom. I train all of it, and they all admire me. That even caused my name to be, I think that even caused my name to be scattered like this. But in some time, some people may think that it's because of my wrongdoing, which is caused by these undecidable elements whom I am far older than them. I am far older than them. I even senior them in the army. Look at these people. Because what? I'm a junior rank. They use me as a tool and dump me like this. I never traveled, even Senegal, when I leave the army up to date. Look at this. My since fellow brother, this is my position, where I am now. Since I'm in nowhere. I'm in nowhere. This is what happened. I am definitely... I'm definitely completely wrong. I'm wrong, but what? I have no choice. I have no choice. Uh, Mr. Kanye, uh, since, since the TRRC started, did you talk to any of the people who were involved in the killing of Honorable Usman Korosise? I remember one day, it's Yankuba who called me. Yankuba who? Yank, Yankuba Toure. What did he say to you? Yankuba Toure, he said to me that, can you, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He said, okay, don't worry. Are you called by these people? I said, which people? He said, Tiaratsi. I said, yes. He said, okay, I, also, I was also, you know, invited by them. But don't worry, forget about them. Yes. So, Hope you didn't tell them anything. I said, sir, anything they ask me, I will tell them. He said, forget about them. They can't do nothing to you. We are, we are the head. We are the senior. We are the leader. I switch off my mouth. I switch off. I ring it off. Just another few minutes time, I was called by Fatima Rajahumba Sise. I was wondering how this, this lady, I never know her. Malon Sudo, Malon Tilly, I never know him, know her rather. How did he manage to get my number through Yankuba? But definitely for her, the advice, he, he advised me that is your mother alive? I say, yes, my mother is alive. 
He said, always do good for your mother. Let her pray for you. But don't mind about these people. I said, which, which people? people? Which people? He said, these TRL people. TRLC people. I learned that they call you. I know you through Edu. I think you are the old little. I say, I'm not an old little, old little Edu. I am not an old little Edu. I mean, I'm an instructor. I work under Peter in training school. But I have never been an old little any, 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 any council members. Did he tell you what to do? With regards to the TRRC, he didn't. He just, he, she said she just tell me that don't mind them. What did you understand that to mean? Don't mind them. It's like let me not respond to you people. And that is the last thing I will do. That is the last thing I will do. My first call when I was called here. When I was called by uh, uh, the senator that. I was called by Senghor. First call was Senghor that you are needed here. I stopped all what I'm doing. I, I respond. When I came, I faced with Alaji Baro. I start conversation with him. This said man told me that, okay, now, hence you respond, I will give you a chance to go because it's been a while. This is almost 22 years. Go and think about. Feel free. Just Go and think, refresh your mind, all what you know and all what you did and all what you involved. We'll call you back, we'll invite you and come and tell us. When you spoke to Yankuba Ture, did you understand him to mean from what he said that you should not talk to the TRRC about what happened in his house? Is that your understanding? Sir? When you spoke to Yanko Bature, did you understand him to mean that you should not talk to the TRRC? Exactly, that's the one. Let me not worry. Let, let me not mind you people. That is, let me not talk to you people. And, and this is all what I was praying since I left the army. I said, I am not going anywhere. All my fellow people, all my people, some all other people travel. But I said, no, I am not traveling. I am... I, Pray to God, for God forgiveness, and pray for any gathering will happen. So as where well, I will come and confess. And and when you spoke to uh, Fatumata Jahumpa Sise, did you also understand her to mean that you should not talk to the TRRC? Council, that's what I said. He really mean that. So, uh, Mr. Kanye. Yes, Here sir. you are, you facing the Gambian people. Yes, sir. You said you were involved in three activities. Yes, sir. And the first activity was the killing of Fafanyang and Basiru Kamara. Basiru Kamara at Yindum Barracks. Yes, sir. You did that with Edward Singate. You also participated in the execution of six officers at the forest near Nyambai, correct? Yes, yes sir. And you did that with council members, correct? Yes, sir. Including Sana Sabali, Odlis. Edward Singate, Yanku Bature, Peter Singate, Saribu Haidara, Babu Karjata, and the Odlis of council members, correct? Yes, sir. Including Buba Jame, Kanilai, yes, Fati. JCB Mendi, B. Njai, and Jai Ponka. Yes, sir. Those are the people you named. I can remember, yes, sir. Thereafter, you also participated in the murder of former Secretary of State, Honorable Usman Korosise. Yes, sir. You said it occurred at the house of then Secretary of State, or in the house of Yanko Bature. Yanko Bature. Council member at the time. Yes, sir. And you said that murder was carried out by Peter Singate, Edward Singate, Yankuba Ture, yourself, Alaji Kanyi, Pa Aliu Gomez, BK Jata, and uh, Tumbul Tamba. 
Nelson. Tumbul died. These three events. Yes, sir. Is your confession absolutely correct? Yes, sir. Did you participate in any other crime? No, sir. Madam Chair, I would leave it at that, and I'll ask the commissioners to answer, to ask questions if they have any, and the witness be given the opportunity to say whatever he wants to say to the Gambian people. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, lead counsel. Thank you, witness. Commissioners, Kinte. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Kanye. No. Um, I remember you said on the fateful day of the 11th of November, uh, as you entered the camp, you were halted, gun pointed by one Mr. Kohli. Yes, sir. And who marched you into the guardroom. Yes, sir. And uh, later, you were advised to join Marong and that you will be working with Marong. In fact, before joining Marong, you were asked to look into the truck. You were given a pistol and then you were asked to shoot. But fortunately for you, that was fortunate, there, there, there was no bullet and it did not fire. Yes, sir. Later, you were told um, to to follow Edward and Fafanyang and Kamara. I forgot the first name. Were ahead of you, and you sought. Um, you did not tell us where you acquired the equipped gun. Who gave it to you? Because that would be helpful to us. Who gave you the gun? We know Edward instructed you, and you joined him to do to execute the service. But who gave you the gun to um, uh, shoot at these guys? Uh, that one was not clear in the uh, testimony. It's like uh, as I said when I was halted at the gate, at the back gate, and doubled up to the guard room. I said. Uh, yes. Then everybody, uh, the, ev the everybody was scattered, and the place was scattered. So everybody with with the uniform, uh, with the weapon, with their person, uh, with the rifle. So I was dressed in green dress. When I was told, advised by one of my brother, to go with him to his house and change dress. When I changed dress, that's the time I also rose to the armory to look for rifle. Um, you are misunderstanding me. That one was the July 22nd event. That was when you came well-dressed and you came and changed. This time round, I'm the saying 11th on November. 11th November, yes. you were gone pointed and marched into guard room. Double up to the guard room in green dress. And in that case, from, from your house, you were not armed. I was not armed. You were given a pistol to shoot at these people. It was empty. Yes. Fine, you came down. Yeah. You were, remarks were made. Yes. But then Edward asked you to join him to execute those two people, Fafanyang and uh, Kamara. Mm -hmm. I said you did not tell us where you were armed to be able to ex uh, exercise this, uh, perform this exercise. Who armed you would be important to the commission and how you were armed. Like, you know, I said, you know, when I changed dress, I think you don't understand, when I changed dress in camouflage, I rose to the armory to get my rifle. At that time, the ammunition was in everywhere. Yes, guard room, RSM's office, you know, it's all over. So it's just, you, as you take your, your, draw your rifle, all rifles are with magazine, one. Now it's you to go and load, load it for your own safety. Yes. Thank 
you, Madam Chair, Commissioner Carr. I'd love, like to know what, how do you think we can reform the army to prevent such things from happening again? Sir? Um, uh, can we hold that? Because he'll be giving his final statement. Okay, we can hold that. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones, um, Mr. Kanye, you did um, explain to the commission in your testimony that since the TRRC started, two individuals called you one of which is Yanko Baturi and the second Fatima Tajahun Pasise. Mm -hmm. Whilst you already explained your relationship with Yanko Baturi, which is understood, could you please explain to the commission why Fatima Tajahun Pasise would call you? Did you ever have cause or need to discuss the three events you narrated to the commission with her? Yes, I, 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 I don't know if, uh, how did she get my number. I know it would be like from Yanko but I don't know. I don't know her. I've never met up with her. I have no relationship with her. You know, I was even wonder. There was there is no relationship between me and her. Nothing absolutely. So that's why I switch off my phone because she cannot, you know, encourage me or telling me something. Only the advice she gave me that, oh, is your mother there? I say yes. Uh, do good for your mother. Let her let her pray for you. That's. I have no relationship with her. Not at all. No single day. Commissioner Jalo. Hello. I'm wondering how it happened that you were singly handpicked to participate in this crime for which you are very sorry. Can you probably enlighten, enlighten us on this? Why were you handpicked? Sir, Imam, it's like my life is in the hands of Sana. Failing to obey. It's like my life is in the hands of Sana, Sana Sabali and Edward. These two people. Failing to obey any instruction from them, being a junior rank at that point in time, it results, it will resort to anything that is, I'll be, because, Imam, 75% Jarangas are victimized. Either one or the other. Either been killed or been arrested to be detained. So, he was even wondering why I was not captured, or I was not even part of the attack in Bakau or anywhere, I don't know. Why this man is still here? It's, it's like that's how I see myself. So that is why I was so close to, as he posed me, that is the uh, CEO's office. It's been a while I didn't even visit my family, because I was scared that any time I leave the barrack, when he come, he asked for this man, where is Kanye? Is out. It means something. At that time, Sana was. I cannot even uh, label him. Council. Uh. Okay. Witness. I know I was going to invite him. You have the opportunity now to speak to the Gambian public and to let you know that members of Koro Sisi are also in the audience. So please, maybe you would like to apologize to them also. Thank you. Council, my name is Aladi Kani, as I mentioned at initial stage. Definitely, world world is seeing me, not only Gambian people. I am apologizing the whole entire Gambian people, and more especially the victim family. I never know, as I mentioned, soldiers involved in this death. They are very good soldiers. They are very productive soldiers. They are very pious. And for me, they do nothing absolutely. This small boy destroyed all the good soldiers in the country, in Gambia. And in order to 
Mr. Koro Sise. I don't know this man. I have done nothing to me. I am totally guilty of anything, any label against me in relation to this 11 November issue. I am completely guilty. It even cost me, you know, my health condition was very terrible right now. Yes, definitely. I cannot sleep. The only thing that will even lead me to ha somehow to have a sleep is when I pray for, when I pray to God. I pray for Turaka. Sometimes my plane will be rest. It, but it's like I am walking, I'm a dead man walking. I was all alone praying for, for Gambia to organize a gathering like such, and which has exactly happened. It's like God has answered to my prayers. I am apologizing entire Gambian people. I am definitely wrong. I am guilty of all the three, all the three I, I have participated. It caused death, and the soul belongs to Almighty Allah. Without this gathering, you no, know, you know, to me, I am not secured. I am not even safe. Praying to God, that is God's forgiveness. Yeah, God can forgive, but how about between you and somebody whom you offend, whom you offended? I am completely guilty. I am completely wrong of the offense committed. Please, Gambian people, I am on my knees. I am on my knees. I totally offend everybody here and abroad. I am completely guilty. Right now, my name is like, I am even more than the president. My name is all over. The first day I had my name, you know, some people even discouraged me to leave, to run. I said, no, I will die here, but I will not go anywhere. Because remember, when I go to foreign lands, that will not solve my problem. It can even lead me to be, to be disgruntled, whereby in the next world, I'll, I'll face more penalty than uh, I stay. Let me, I'll say to myself, I will stay, no matter what tough it may be, one day or the other. You know, I'll face the, 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 the victim family and entire Gambian people. And I am ready, counsel, please help me to meet with this victim family, to apologize to them at all costs, to apologize to Gambian people. I am completely wrong of offense committed by me. Considering my rank at that point in time, 22 years my nose from my age, what age I'll be. And at that time I was a cop, and they just use us, they just use me as a tool. No benefit I have on this. No nothing absolutely. No in cast neither in anything. No promotion. Nothing absolutely. If not, you know, you know, some good Gambian people, then I can be a madman because my living condition will be very terrible. My living condition will be very terrible. Yes, sometimes people tell me, have faith. Yes, it is stated in the Holy Quran, have faith. But you know, you have good sabab and bad sababus. So these people, I categorize them on the bad sababus. I categorize my father as a good sababu who, who, who uh, you know, uh, take me to the school to learn in order to join the uh, to, to to go a better world, to help him. And these people, I'm disturbed by the, you know, the, 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 the undesirable element. And where are they now? They leave me here and go. Even to walk in the street by by foot, I will really feared sometimes. I feared. It will come to my mind that yes. When I'm killed, no problem. Yes. Look at it. My brother, my brother is sitting here. My senior brother, same father, brother. I cannot even face him. I am totally guilty. Hello, Gambian brothers and sisters, young and old. Sisters, brothers and sisters, young and old, elderly person, Imam, I'm here. I'm definitely, I am completely guilty. Yes, even I'm on the Lord. One of my sisters is here. I cannot even face him. Face her, rather. I cannot face her. And actually, Jaranka, the two Jara, that is Jara West and Jara, Jara East. Because I was born in Jara West, 
Samkia, and brought up in Jara is Breng. Bashiri is from Barokunda. Barokunda from Barokunda come to Sudukun Sudukun Breng. I am apologizing all the Jarankas. All the Jarankas. Who, he who knows me, if you ask them, Kanye is in the army, they even wonder how did he manage to join the army? Because I was not, at that time, I was not, it's like it comes to me by luck. I was not physically fit at that time, but I have no choice to join the army. I have no choice. I'm jobless. I'm jobless. So people help you to join the army, but not to go and destroy my own fellow brothers and brothers. My own brothers, my own uncles, because I can take Koro to be my uncle or my father also. I don't know him. Look at him, my own brother, who is from Jarabarokun, whom I share the same basin with him, Suso. Lamin Dabo, from, from Jarabreng. My stepmother from, is from the same compound. He's seeing me. He's hearing me. And Bashiru Kamara, the same Pakalinding, Pakalinding and Sankya, where, where I am now. Please, counsel, help me. Help me. Between me and God, I'll pray, continuous prayer and keep him fast for God's forgiveness. But the most important thing, that is the victim family and entire Gambian people. And entire Gambian people. Definitely. El Arar, it's me, Elaji Kani. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Everybody is seeing me. Yes. I even want this to come out plain. Let everybody know. Kani, Kani, they are talking. These are the three events I participated. These are the three events I participated. Please, I, my health condition is very bad. I'm under high blood. Can I answer to your question? <coughs> or you're okay? Not really, okay. Uh, perhaps maybe we can yeah. leave that to other witnesses. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kanye. Uh, Madam Chair, before we release the witness, mm -hmm. I just wish to advise the entire population not to take the law in their own hands. Mr. Kanye has done his duty to the Gambian people. He has come before the commission. He has testified. He has confessed to his own crimes, um, I encourage everybody to leave the law to take its course and not to try to do anything to the witness. And to also warn all those people who are attempting to tamper with witnesses of the TRRC to desist from such activities, because it's quite obvious to all that that is a crime a tampering with witnesses, tampering with evidence is a crime, and everybody is being warned to desist from that. Um, thank you, Mr. Kanye, for your testimony, and uh, the chair would discharge you. And uh, if you at any point in time feel that you are under threat, your life is at risk, please report it to the commission and the necessary action would be taken. I take it that the Gambian people would appreciate the fact that it's about time we start doing things properly and not <coughs> behave in the unlawful manner in which the previous regime used to behave. We cannot take the law in our own hands. We have to allow the law to take its course. Uh, thank you very much. Council, I also want to advise young soldiers presently in the army, junior officers and senior officers, for them to be diseased from giving junior officers unlawful order. Look at me today. Soldiers, you are seeing me. At that point in time, I'm a junior officer, a junior soldier, rank of couple. I was given order by senior officer. Starting from junior officer, that is, junior officer started from second lieutenant to captain.
senior officers start from captain to major to major and above. And look at this. There is a code that we obey all orders, either verbal or written. Yes. But you know, verbal orders should be selected, senior, senior officers. Look at my position today. I'm in nowhere. And that is caused by what the senior officers. Nobody else but these two undecidable elements. Intake 12 of Gambian National Army and intake 15. I am intake 5, 460. 460 personnel in the Gambian Army. My life, my life was destroyed by junior officers. By obeying them. Look at this now. It's like Son and father, you obey your, your you obey your father, giving you instruction which will, which is not good. Army is like that. The highest standard of discipline is there, but definitely, government has to look into the army very well and see how best to be resourceful and talk to junior officers on the issue of verbal instruction. Thank you very Sorry. much. Well, really, today has not been an easy day for the Commission. Uh, for the family members of Korosise who are present, I hope that knowing the facts will bring closure to your pain. It has been a long journey before you knew what the truth behind his passing away was. We hope that this really helps to ease the pain. And once again, on behalf of the Commission and everybody here present, we extend our condolences to the family once again on the loss of a great son of the soil. To the people of the Gambia, especially those who think that the TRRC is a witch hunt. Not at all. Not at all. Or that we are a toothless bulldog. I want to draw your attention to the mandate of the TRRC Act that spells out our role very clearly, that we are here to create an impartial record of violations and abuses of human rights from July 1994 to January 2017 in order to address impunity, promote healing and reconciliation and prevent a repeat of such violations and abuses. We give victims and perpetrators the same opportunity to come here and narrate their role in the events that occurred during this period. We hope that by establishing the truth, Gambians will learn lessons from what happened in the past and take the de determination that never again in the history of this Gambia will such atrocities take place. Mr. Kani, on behalf of the fellow commissioners, the legal team, and everybody here present, we would like to thank you for coming out, for stating it as it is. It is not going to be easy for you. The lead council has told people not to take the law into their own hands but we thank you for your courage, for coming out to state it as it is, because it helps us in creating the record that we have been mandated to do. We will continue the journey with you in terms of healing, in terms of reconciliation, in terms of other issues that need to be done. The lead council are there, the brilliant uh, psychosocial team are there, and the investigative team, and we will accompany you on that journey. Thank you very much. Uh, this session is closed. It brings us to the end of the second session. We will meet here again on the 11th of March, 2019, at 10 o'clock. Thank you.